Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today is time for my top five favorite fragrances for the month of March 2018. Slowly, very, very, very slowly, spring is upon us. Uh, depending which part of the world you're in, of course, somewhere we already have summer, somewhere we have deep summer, somewhere we have in spring, somewhere it's still winter. So in this kind of confusional sense of state, emotional and um, temperature-wise sense of state, I have a, a mixed assortment of fragrances that I use depending on how cold it is outside or how warm it is outside in the morning. Is it dry? Is it wet outside? And according to the temperature, also my mood tends to swing. That's why I'm all over the place this month and you're going to see. So we're going to begin with, I think most of you have guessed because I've been talking about this one for a long time now. I'm obsessing with Gardenia. Chanel's uh, Les Exclusives Gardenia. You know I love my Eau de Toilette, but this is the Eau de Parfum. I mentioned in the video about this fragrance, why I purchased the Eau de Parfum. Um, Cause it was in a duty free shop and it was super cheap. And I got a lot of uh, reductions on top of it. So that really made my day. Uh, I made it cost less than Euro Toilette. And then I found a way to use it by spraying it on clothes and skin, mixing it up together. I sprayed a lot, as you can see. I don't know like how much time has passed over a month, slightly over a month. And I've already used up like one fourth of, of, the, of the fragrance of the bottle, the 200 milliliter bottle. Loving it. I really fell in love with it. And this only works for me the Olivier Paul Jouf formulations of the Les Exclusives from the Eau de Toilettes into the Eau de Parfums. Um, because this is one of the originals from the 20s that Ernest Beau made and created. So they have already been altered throughout the decades. We could even talk centuries soon. So it's it's not like mm, for the first time ever, uh, Jacques Paul Jouf created this one in 2007. And hence now Olivier changed it. Already Jacques altered it. We don't have the same ingredients. Uh, that Gardenia had in the 20s. Um, perfumery has advanced a lot since the 20s, and certain ingredients have become much cheaper to obtain nowadays. Certain other ingredients are impossible to obtain nowadays. So, you know, you got to play with the moral of the times you're in. Hence, it's interesting to experiment with really old formulations and uh, mythological creatures like Chanel's Gardenia from the 20s, within today. And that was why I curiously went for it as for the Eau de Parfum, as well as the fact that the Eau de Toilette is too light on me. It really is. This one lasts a whole day, but I do spray. I, I go for it. I don't, I can't, I'm embarrassed to say even how many times I spray it all over myself, but so this is in the morning and it goes all the way throughout the evening. If I'm in the mood that day, if the day is very cold but dry, I love that blooming gardenia in the freezing cold. Wow. However, sometimes it's just too cold for me, and so I rush to something warm, soothing, almondy, vanillic bitter almondy, and you probably guessed by now it's Dior's Hypnotic Poison. Look at this poisonous apple. Isn't it amazing? This is the biggest bottle uh, that they produce at the moment. It's 150 milliliters and mm, delicious. So this is my number two. Also, in the morning, I tend to not go too heavy on it, but I kind of take this apple with me uh, in my bag. And yes, it's huge. And yes, it's very heavy, but I do it nevertheless because it has no stickers. I would never take gardenia with me because of the sticker. I wouldn't want it to rub. So that's a bit tricky with that one. But this one... It's all good. Um, and I would kind of, as the day goes on, I apply more heavily <laughs> throughout the progression of the day. But a very dear friend of mine, you know who you are, thank you so much, um, got me something very, very precious. This is the actual, um, at the moment, bottle design and formulation of Hypnotic Poison, Eau de Toilette. We all know that the original came out in the 90s, in the early 90s. The hypnotic poison and uh the formulation has been kept the same you know until around 2010 ish well there was a series right around when dior's addict was released um you know how dior tends to kind of refurbish their bottles and create little special editions that uh depict the shape of the newest perfume bottle 
but these containers then contain also the fragrances of their other perfumes. So that's what they did when Addict came out. And so this friend of mine, um, her mom had this from the early 2000s. This is incredible what I'm about to show you. It's a, it's a scoop. It's a, it's a very, very precious little gem. And, um, and she never really liked, she got it as a present. She got Hypnotic Poison together with this little golden gidget. Uh, and she she used her hypnotic poison in the loo and she just didn't care for it really but this one just stayed kind of sealed in the box in this gift package and so my friend found it found it in, in her mom's wardrobe it has never been opened and and gifted it to me it is heavy duty metal it looks like the uh, Dior addict let me come in as close as possible um, you could see. It looks like the Dior Addict, I mean, it's the goal is a little bit off now by now because so many years has pa have passed. Like the Dior Addict bottle, um, it's metal and you click this little stopper here that protects it from spraying. You literally, well, let me come in close. You, This is hard. You lift it and then you fold it to the back and then you could spray out here. But... You unscrew this metal thing, it's super heavy. And here you have 7.5 milliliter original formulation eau de toilette sealed of hypnotic poison. Oh my God, I'm in heaven. <laughs> this is... It's just even too good to be used. Yes, there's a difference. Yes, there is a difference between the 90s version and the 2015 and onwards version, yes. But now that we have them side by side, you know what I'm going to do? Wait, let me put this back. I'm actually... No, how did I do this? I did this wrong. I want to make a little comparison. Wouldn't that be great? Really quick here. I'm doing it wrong here. Do I have anything on? No. Okay. Oh, I've, I, I'm so excited because I've been protecting this one. I didn't want to spray it, but I'm going to now. For the love of you, now I'm going to do it here. Mind-blowing. Oh. Okay, I have my silver bracelet here. I'm going to take it off because I don't want to get any perfume on it. But I'm going to spray the newer formulation on this hand. Oh, I missed the spot there. Okay. Also delicious, but way blander. We're talking. They're similar. I have to say, Dior, you're doing good by us. The, the actual formulation of Hypnotic Poison, yes, it's modernized. Yes, it's, it's slightly trimmed differently tailored slightly differently in a different way but it's still completely there the dna of hypnotic poison is still completely there you know a lot of people mention this play doughy touch and aspect to to this one yes it's there it's a bit more synthetic both of them are synthetic you know they're not completely natural perfumes that's impossible but the, the vintage formulation, we could call it vintage by now, alas. Well, technically not, because if this one is from 2000-something, it's not vintage yet. It needs tw to be old 20 years to be called vintage. But this one gives me an edge. It's, it's really very structured. It, it has its corners, borders. It, it, the framework of it is very, it cuts right through. This one is more fuzzy. You know, the corners aren't so well defined it 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 kind of it reminds us of hypnotic poison from the past like but we feel that it's a bottle from now and it's hinting at the past while this one you're literally there in the 90s and and you're smelling hypnotic poison for the first time this one it's like you're smelling it from afar unfortunately that that is the case this one is much more sharp and crystalline and this one is more fuzzy and fluffy but love both of them you know don't get me wrong i will keep purchasing as long as they don't mess it up even more i will be still purchasing the the new formulation but the old one incredible okay moving on 
Uh, and this is why I'm all over the place because this one is discontinued since many years. It's super expensive on the second secondary market or secondhand market. It is Dolce Gabbana's Buy. Buy Dolce Gabbana Men. Well, maybe like this. And um, uh, this one is so spring, you know, and that's why I'm I'm liking it now because it makes me hope of warmer days. And um, I like to use it in the middle of the day. Oh, there's not much left in here. It's so wonderful. If you do get a chance, you should try out both of them, the male and female version. The female version has the leopard cover. It's all brown. And the male version is the zebra black and white produced by Euro Italia back in the day. This one is warm and yet fresh at the same time. It's slightly fruity, a lot of sandalwood in there. Yes, it's very synthetic and it's very 90s type of synthetic way. But it brings back great memories. This is a, a grown up, but fun at the same time, Dolce Gabbana fragrance. Such a shame that they discontinued it. Moving on into the evening, we were talking about Dior Addict, and here we have Dior Addict. This is, again, for really, really cold nights. Oh, I'm loving it. The night blooming cacti. Well, what do we call it? The queen of the night is in here. Somebody says it's not in here anymore since the reformulations. I still smell it. And the vanilla in this one is so beautiful. Like, Dior really managed... You know, I have my problems with vanilla because of the reformulations of Hypnotic Poison. But the vanilla in here, I'm good with it. I, I really, really like it. And it's such a pleasant and warming and calming and soothing scent, but but it's addictive in terms of you got to know how to dose it, right? You can overdose on this one very easily. You got to know really how to balance, how to ride that wave of being high in the right way um, so that it keeps tickling you in the right way and not suffocating you. It's amazing. Addict is perfect. And number five, for the deepest of nights, for those sensual encounters, we have Opium Pour Homme Eau de Parfum. I have here both formulations, um, the original one, the pre-reformulation era, in its refillable plastic little box. You can check also the reviews of most of these in the description box down below. I will post it. And its reformulated counterpart, a bit more rich in pepper, um, still amazing nevertheless. I know that the Eau de Parfum has been discontinued in most countries. Unfortunately, I don't know why Yves Saint Laurent did that. The Eau de Parfum is incredible. Get your hands on it if you can. The vanilla in here is also really good. It's an Yves Saint Laurent type of vanilla. It's not a Dior type of vanilla. The star anise and um, the, the pepper notes are, are just so beautiful. There's also some rose in here, slight hints of leather, but just faint, faint, faint in the background. Very, very sophisticated, very 90s, and the dry, the vanilla dry down in both of them. Here, even more so than here. This one is a bit more spicy. Also because it's fresher, you know, the batch is fresher, the batch code. This one is a bit older. Um, this one tends to have a spicier dry down vanilla, which is also amazing. And this one has that pure 90s dry, vanillic dry down that just reminds me of entering certain stores uh, that actually still today spray... Uh, with 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 opium i don't know why but there are a couple of stores that do that and i love that so much i'm not going to mention any names and then you come in and you, you have that tingling vanilla in the background and you know what well, if you know what it is you're like so pleasantly surprised um i love my opium pour homme eau de parfum i really hope that they do not discontinue it because it's getting harder and harder to find the reformulated version you see they already took away the plastic container this refillable container and you can just buy it in, in its glass. It's a different type of bottle that, that, than the glass bottle in here, by the way, because some people have been asking me in the past, can you put this one inside of there? You can't. Um, and they only exist as 50 ml. They also did in the past, only as 50 ml. But look how 50 ml looks bigger when it's in its container than how it looks in an actual glass bottle. Incredible. I did stock up on this one. Like, whenever I encounter it anywhere, I, I purchase it, you know. I, I, I keep stocking up on it just in case. And let's break the rules, as we always do. Number six, for special, special dry occasions and dreaminess. We began with a Chanel and we closed with a Chanel. It's Chanel number 19, the pure perfume. This is a vintage 15 milliliter spray bottle. 
And, um, oh my God, you know, num you, you don't know perfumes if you don't love number 19, the pure perfume, because it's not an easy one to love. It's not an easy one to understand, but, um, its sophistication is so radical. It, it blows my mind. I can't wear it always. There are days I just don't get it. I, I can't, but I just love it so much because there's nothing like it. Nothing ever was like it and nothing ever will be. The pure perfume, mind you, that's the only one that gives me that explosion in the head. The pure perfume. Try it if you get a chance because it really sends you off to outer space. Um, because it smells like another time. And I'm not talking about it smells like the past or the future. I, I don't know. It just doesn't smell like it belongs here and now. It, it really... It elevates you so much when you wear this one. That, that That's why sometimes it's just hard for me to wear it because sometimes I, I, I can't mm, play the game at its level. That's how high it is. Henri Robert is the perfumer uh, behind this one. And this one was created during the lifetime of Coco Chanel. And it is said that she herself really liked to wear it. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this uh, video. Let me know in the comment section down below, which are your favorite perfumes for the month of March, 2018. And if you liked or not my selection here, um, thumb up this video if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. No matter if it's cold or hot outside, we will always find the right perfume to wear because we never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye.